can the NCC be the silent observer in this matter at this point in time? I wouldn't say that they're the silent observer. As I said last week, uh, there were discussions uh, in between um, NTN uh, Group CEO, who was there, uh, and uh, the EDC. Uh, even I myself, I've uh, put in a, a note of caution towards uh, how we've handled this situation with one of the largest investors in our sector. Um, so NCC, I believe, would like uh, CBN and the AGF to resolve this amicably with the uh, MTN. Um, and yes, of course, if it uh, isn't able to be resolved amicably, um, we don't hope that scenario will play out, uh, they will have no option but to intervene. You have been speaking with some of the stakeholders. Is the Association of Telecoms Companies of Nigeria, which you chair, taking a stand on this matter? Uh, well, we've uh, made statements to, to uh, really uh, indicate to government that really the moves that they're making may actually impact uh, further investments coming into the sector. Um, and it's really clouded around the issue of repatriation of uh, funds uh, and I think that most investors as you've seen lately I mean the NSC has taken a dip uh, not to say that it's uh, there's a correlation but uh, there's an indication that there is nervousness around uh, the issues around CCIs and uh, repatriation of funds out of Nigeria. So processes are indeed looking a bit more uh, cautiously detailed or deliberate now as opposed to when tempers were flaring initially when the, all of this matter came to the fore. What is your assessment of the response by investors to your sector? I think, uh, you know, even before this action uh, took place, uh, we had seen a dip in our FDI. And I must say that uh, there are certain other issues that are obviously also surrounding uh, the way we actually do business in Nigeria. And I think that if government can focus on ease of doing business, it might help the situation. But, uh, you know, there's multiple taxation, multiple regulation, and I can go on and on and on. These are recurring themes. So we really need uh, that there is a discussion uh, really around how government views the digital transformation and how they want to take that forward because the telco sector is fundamental to that vision being realized. Multiple taxation, you mentioned whether or not we want to put them together. This is a lump of fines for MTN. Talk about the $8.1 billion funds they're being asked to bring back, uh, the $2 billion, uh, $2 billion rather tax that they have to pay over the last 10 years, according to the AGF, and they are still, they, they, they've only still paid 50% of the fine by the NCC. And when you consider the fact that MTN's capital base is just around the $10 billion area, there is... What, 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 are the, what are the issues here as far as you're concerned? Sh is this a question of should they pay or can they pay? Can they survive the heat? Should they stand the heat? As I said, uh, you know, they've gone to court to protect their assets and I think that's the right move by them because they've got to basically have those discussions with government. The government officials that there's differences in, ter in, in interpretation, I believe. Um, they need to handle this cordially. Uh, diplomatically, I believe that's uh, the right approach. And then for government to really have a, for, a sort of a corporate governance framework that's transparent to allay the fears and the concerns of investors who are not only in our sector but in other sectors surrounding this issue to do with CCIs. So I believe ongoing dialogue will resolve the issue. Now, let's go to Nine Mobile. That, let's, let's look at the timeline, first of all. In February, Teleology was picked as the preferred bidder. In July, Nine Mobile extended its takeover timeline, saying it was giving time for new investors. It needed time to finalize documentation to ensure smooth transition. In August, the NCC blamed delay in Nine Mobile sales on accumulated debt owed by Nine Mobile. Where are we at now? Well, let's Is it sold or not? <laughs> <laughs> it has been sold. It has been sold, but obviously there are processes and procedures that have to be uh, gone through before the acquirer can gain their assets. And in the case of Nine Mobile, um, NCC has given their approval. That's, that's official. Uh, and now they're waiting for SEC approval. So it might seem like a long, drawn-out process, but it is almost there, and I'm sure that uh, you know they'll be making an announcement that is positive for all investors, including yourself, that uh, that's behind them now. Now, while we wait for that, the NCC is back to, we still have to do due diligence. What are the steps that should normally be taken for a takeover of this nature? 
Um, due diligence is important. Uh, it was highlighted months back. That's correct, and I think that uh, there were some concerns raised within uh, NCC, and that's only right. That just shows you that the due diligence is obviously a very detailed due diligence. Um, and they've, con well, in my estimation, they've concluded that because they've given them a, a, an approval, and that approval has been received by uh, Telology. So are we likely to see trigger reactions to, uh, to the nine mobile uh, takeover now from the F uh, M uh, MTN, FG, Telcos, no, <laughs> banks, face-off? I, I, face I think these are just uh, the norm in a very volatile and high-risk environment. As I say, the environment is still has many opportunities, but I guess any investor has to quantify and qualify the risk that they're prepared to take because, as I said, government relationship building is very, very important in this environment. Uh, you need to actually strengthen that to be able to go through these, uh, what can be sometimes an unpredictable uh, environment. So um, I believe that the MTN uh, issue will uh, come through. Uh, there will be a uh, settlement or a negotiation um, that will lead to an amicable resolution to this. Uh, and Telogy has nothing to fear. Uh, I believe that the management of Telogy understand the terrain and uh, are prepared to jump in and uh, see how we can grow this industry further. So where do all of these lead investors' sentiments within the sector? Well, it's been damaged at the moment, uh, I must say. I, I don't think that uh, if you talk to your average South African right now, uh, they're positive on Nigeria. Uh, there's a lot of questions asked around um, their investments. I think they feel it's been targeted at South Africans. Obviously, MTN is a South African company. But we have to look at this from a bigger perspective. Uh, we're all brothers in this uh, uh, big African nation. And uh, what impacts Nigeria impacts South Africa. What impacts South Africa <laughs> impacts Nigeria. So I believe that the best thing going forward for government is to really disclose what's really uh, the reason for this so that people can see that if they're trying to block leakages or to improve their systems, that that's it and only it. And